What's up guys, I'm Patrick from Conquer Custom and this is a cool old 54 Chevy truck that I got. However, every single bolt underneath it is rusty, crusty, and impossible to remove. So I called up my homies at Eastwood. Eastwood sent over the 60 amp plasma cutter. Let's cut this baby open and see what we got. Instructions. <laughs> are relatively simple. The 60 amp one from Eastwood comes with everything you need except the air chuck. They probably leave that out because everybody has different types of air chucks in their shops or whatever, but figure out which one you need and install it right into the back of the unit. The Eastwood plasma cutter runs off 240 or 110, so it comes with the 240 cord attached and a little adapter guy if you're going to run this thing off of your you know, normal little 110, 120, whatever you want to call it outlet. But Definitely running it off 240, you get way more power. Setting up the gun, install the airline, install the positive cable, and install the trigger control. Installing the ground, you simply insert it and twist until it stops moving. That's the guy, snug as a bug. All right, set the pressure on it, then we're ready to cut it. Once you've got it all set up, Hook up your airline and then flip the switch to turn the unit on. Once you turn the unit on, you'll see there's a few dials and buttons on the front of this bad boy. This one controls your air pressure. You pull it out, you twist it, and that's how you adjust your air pressure. Lock it back down. This adjusts your current, starts off at 20. That's the amperage that's going to it, all the way up to 60 amps. Boop, boop, boop. Let's start off at 40 and see what we're doing with that. Over here on the right, you got this button that changes it from 4T, 2T, test, test. That gets the air flowing. 2T means you push the trigger and it stays going as long as you hold the trigger. As soon as you let go of the trigger, it shuts off. 4T, you push the trigger and release it and it keeps going until you push the trigger again. Little uh, overload light up here. If you uh, overdo it with this bad biscuit, then That'll probably turn on and it'll stop working. Setting this bad boy up for the very first time, the book says to put the air around 60. So put it in test mode, pull out, crank that up until it reads about 60 ish on there. There we go. Yep. Lock it back down. Take it out of test mode. 60 psi is your general guideline to start off with a plasma cutter, but you want to use the little tester guy that comes with this bad boy. So you just hold it onto the nozzle. Beep boop pop. Hit test, and then adjust the air until you're in that hole. You didn't get it done in time. <laughs> Looks about right to me. Plasma cutting is messy business. So wear some gloves. I used to use my welding mask. You can just wear some plasma shades if you like, but mm, welding masks, they almost all have a cutting feature in them now. So, you know, protect yourself. We're gonna like, catch on fire. Let's test this thing out. So to test this thing out, I just grabbed a piece of scrap out of the old uh, bin over there. And it's interesting because I used a different plasma cutter when I originally made some cuts with this. And if you look closely, you can see the serrations of the cut are just kind of wild. They walk all over the place. This new Cut 60, if you look at the line there, it's very uniform. This is the old plasma cutter, very sloppy, very all over the place. This one seems very, very flat and even cut. So off to a good start. All right, now to put this baby to the real test, we're gonna crawl underneath this beast and start hacking off all these rusty old bolts. As you can see, I'm wearing a little more clothing now because uh, this is gonna get dirty. All right, let's see.
feel like I'm in a tentacle porn with all this cable. Plenty long. There we go, a great success. The new plasma cutter is awesome. It cut off the bolts, got it out of there. Eastwood, good stuff.